Honestly. Apparently, I'm not sure if it's confirmed, but when they caught one of those pieces of shit, like the soldiers immediately beat the shit out of him to such an extent and even cut off his he ear and made him fucking eat it. I will not share my opinion on this sort of behavior. Uh, we move on to other horrors that plague our world, and that is uh, the terror attack in Moscow, which uh, hit hard and hit surprisingly, no matter how much they say, oh, the United States uh, warned them, etc., etc. Uh, let's get into the topic. Let's watch first uh, some coverage of the mass murder in Moscow's theater hall. Authorities now say at least 137 people died after four gunmen fired at concert goers before setting the building on fire. Well, today was declared a national day of mourning for the victims. The Islamic State group has released graphic footage which appears to back up its claim of responsibility. But Vladimir Putin has suggested Ukraine was involved. The suggestion which has been confirmed is that they were running away towards Ukraine. Does that mean directly that Ukraine has supported them both logistically or financially? No, it does not. Uh, does it absolutely imply that potentially they were using this current situation, which is, you know, the, the war in Ukraine, so that they have a place where they could potentially hide after having committed uh, this fucking insanely atrocious uh, campaign of mass murder. Uh, yes, it absolutely does. All the videos, all the documentation, all the uh, all the footage that we've seen, all the analysis that we've seen shows that they very much so have been moving towards that territory. The Islamic State, I believe at this point can be said, has committed this heinous act of mass murder because they've proven it through different uh, footage, etc., etc. But uh, let's, let's see how the West covers this. Wherever you looked, wherever you turned, you could see this was a country in mourning and in shock. Across and Russia, flags flew at half-mast for the victims of the concert I mean, hall massacre. And at the scene of Friday's attack, Crocus City Hall, the queues grew longer and longer. The National Day of Mourning experienced most acutely here. There was an outpouring of sympathy, a mountain of tributes to the dead. This is how the attack had begun with gunmen in the foyer and desperate attempts to take cover. The attackers moved on to the auditorium. By the end of this, more than 130 people were dead. Four suspects have been arrested. Tonight, the suspected gunmen appeared in court. Russia claims they'd been caught fleeing to Ukraine and had contacts there. Kiev fiercely denies any link to the attack. The Islamic State group says... At this point, we cannot uh, confirm nor deny any connection. Uh, would it make sense that more radical groups in a country that is currently at war with another country would logistically potentially support the enemy of my enemy that will saw chaos in the country that is invading them? Absolutely. Do we have proof at this point of that? We absolutely do not. This can only be speculation and nothing more. But uh, stating that you 100% believe that there was no involvement or stating that you 100% believe that there was involvement is absolute mumbo jumbo bullshit. One could argue, uh, hey, what can this do for Ukraine in general? How is this helping the Ukrainian cause? And it very much so isn't. But uh, that is the logic of state actors, not necessarily potential more radical units inside of uh, Ukrainian military apparatus, right? Which very much so can find connections of this sort can from their perspective obviously as it was behind the shooting and on this day of morning silent prayers but yes it needs to be said funnily enough uh oddly enough isis k always seems to attack u.s adversaries mind fucking blown and i fucking hate the argument that uh hey the russians didn't do anything even after the united states uh told them that there can be a potential isis attack funnily enough russian police quite 
literally a few days before that stopped multiple potential ISIS attacks, which one the United States was talking about in particular, thanks to the information that they have access to, which also is pretty wild, does not uh, does not insinuate that they knew that exactly this one is going to happen. And hey, this happened to Russia because they didn't listen to the US saying that there's going to be an ISIS attack happening. Apparently, multiple attacks were being planned, but this one was uh, was not stopped. And what happened fucking happened. The absolute horror. Uh, questions should be raised about why a large event such as this is not uh, protected by a larger police presence. And that is an argument that needs to be made. But when it's coming from the United States, it's kind of a weird one because the reason in the rest of the world that there's no fucking armed police officers uh, in every school and every concert hall and in every fucking inch of the country is because this sort of shit doesn't really happen so commonly here, okay? We don't have fucking school shootings every two fucking days. Joining me now is our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. Frank, what can we say about why Islamic State might have targeted Russia? Okay, well, you know, there's kind of three reasons, really, three possible causes. One is Syria where the Russian Air Force has been inflicting pretty heavy casualties throughout Syria's civil war on Islamic State fighters. And a recent um, communique by Islamic State's kind of leadership said, we will never forgive and forget. In other words, we will settle scores. So that's one possibility. Another is Afghanistan, where ISIS is what's called Khorasan branch, um, are fighting the Taliban. Now, that's going to sound strange, but they are mortal enemies. And ISIS considers that the Taliban are allies of Russia. In 2022, they attacked the Russian embassy in Kabul. So that's another possibility. And the third is the general kind of suppression by um, Russia's FSB, that's the domestic security agency, of suspected jihadists and other Muslim uh, individuals inside Russia. And based on this news tonight from France, Frank, what's your assessment of the Islamic State threat in Europe? Well, it never went away. So MI5, for example, here in the UK, which is the the security service. Yeah, I mean, this is always a LARP. Like, you can't really kill an idea, especially a fucked up idea such as ISIS. So the threat level will always be present. We need to ask why institutions, if we can call them that, like ISIS, have emerged in the first place. And obviously the answer, as always, is large global powers, specifically one very large global power, but okay, let's say most global powers meddling in affairs that are of no concern to them, completely destabilizing particular states, which allow for the creation of militant groups led uh, by uh, smart, corrupt, and uh, fucking demonic individuals uh, who create armies of uh, easily manipulated quasi-soldiers which are willing to lay their life for uh, ideals that have been hammered into their head but that they accept as real ideas because of the immense traumas that they might have gone through. It is a reactionary fascistic solution to a very real imperial problem. That is how terrorism is born. Well, CNN's Claire Sebastian has reported extensively from Russia and joins us now from London. Claire, what more are you learning about those four suspects who appeared in court? Yeah, and so all four, according to state media, said to be from... Always the fucking meme of, of Western media. I mean, I fucking love this. Hello, fellow Western man that is an expert on the far Orientals. Please tell us what is happening there. This one is of particular interest because another group of Orientals attacked another group of Orientals. How particular? Why do you believe this has happened, my fellow distinguished journalist? <laughs> From Tajikistan, uh, essentially migrant workers. And on the one hand, this sets up a relatively delicate situation for Russia. They rely on migrant workers. It's an important part of the uh, the workforce, especially now at a time of critical labor shortages, which are hampering its efforts uh, to sort of ramp up the war economy. So they will not want to deter migrant workers from coming uh, in the wake of this. The second thing is, of course, uh, that they did all arrive, as you say, in various states of injury, one with a bandage to the side of his head, another in a wheelchair and unresponsive. Apparently, I'm not sure if it's confirmed, but when they caught one of those pieces of shit, like the soldiers immediately beat the shit out of him to such an extent and even cut off his he ear and made him fucking eat it. I will not share my opinion on this sort of behavior because TOS responsive and we see this video that's been released by Russia's investigative committee showing them being sort of forcibly marched into that Moscow courthouse. The security apparatus now 
attempting to show that it's getting tough, that it's in control of this situation, obviously amid questions uh, over why this huge terror attack, the biggest. It was a pretty edgy moment, I have to say so. Wait, I can't really show the picture. But the guy, the guy that caught one of the terrorists, and I believe one of the guys that might have cut off his ear and made him eat it, which again is unconfirmed, literally was wearing like a little like, <laughs> like, like, cute boy hatty hat, right? And was wearing a mask same as mine. And some people in my Discord were like, you go, did you just go to Russia to catch some terrorists? And I will neither confirm nor deny me feeding people their ears. <laughs> in Russia in over two decades was missed. I think one more point to make about this legal process is that there are already signs uh, that it may not play. Your thing has been confirmed? Okay out in a climate of full transparency the press were not allowed uh, to listen to the entirety uh, of these hearings on sunday so these suspects have now been uh, held in pretrial detention for a period of at least two months we know uh, that precedent would suggest that pretrial detention in russia can be a lot longer uh, than that but i think there are there's a chance that we will not be able to witness uh, all of how these trials play out anna yeah, this was it. This was it. The guy that caught, I mean, you can kind of almost see the guy that they're carrying, but uh, one of the special forces guys that caught the dude, this is what they were wearing. <laughs> Literally me, bro. Literally me. Yeah, there's a full video of the ear cut, I know, but I didn't want to talk about it as confirmed because we don't know if it's exactly confirmed. But lit <laughs> literally me, bro. Hey, <laughs> literally me. <laughs> pretty wild like wearing wearing this this hat as you hunt terrorists through your country is damn son we do be playing cod irl bro he do be looking like an average american uni student bro and Claire, now there are questions uh, being raised inside russia and why the the massive state security apparatus failed mm. to stop this attack yeah, there are. Look, I think it's it's not clear at this point uh, how much the average Russian is starting to question this. Obviously, uh, President Putin has come out and said that there might be. A I have talked to Russians on the day when this has happened. Plenty of Russians that live abroad and that live in Russia itself. They are pissed off at terrorist pieces of shit. And yes, they are asking questions on why this hasn't been stopped, uh, because this is the biggest terrorist attack in, I believe, the last 20 years in the Russian Federation. And it happening during a time of war further destabilizes the idea that, you know, all is going fine, everything is okay. But uh, the Russian soul and the Russian mind doesn't really jump at uh, blame as much as it jumps at who are these motherfuckers and how can we find them and how can we make them eat their fucking ears, okay? The Ukrainian link and uh, the security services are attempting to look in control, but certainly we hear uh, from the Russian opposition, the, the head of Navalny's anti-corruption agency, Ivan Zhdanov, uh, saying that you know this was a result, he said, of the catastrophic incompetence of our special services. He also points out that Russians uh, have spent years being told that their rights are being eroded for this purpose, to, to, to increase their security, to prevent terrorism. This will obviously be used by the, the, the Russian state representatives as a show of uh, a force. They've caught them, they beat the shit out of them, they're going to parade the shit out of them, and they're going to say, look, we might not have been able to defend you, but we will fucking punish. They will very much so go down the route of, hey, all of you watching who want to potentially do this, Look at what will happen to you if you do this. Classic American-styled, Russian-styled response to, to terrorism. That, that approach they very much so share, okay? Uh, the only thing that one should uh, be fearful of, because I'm not going to lose any sleep over these pieces of shit, especially I don't think anybody should after having watched uh, what they did uh, in no fucking way. This is... These are individuals far past any point of herder, we can make them better uh, point. Uh, if you think that, you're a better person than me. God bless, but that's not me. The only thing that relatively sh we should be afraid of is increased, obviously, Islamophobia towards Muslim Russians or uh, Muslim people in general of different ethnicities in, in Russia in general. Uh, will this happen? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, opinion on Muslims uh, varies uh, by region. 
uh, and the, in Russia, their their opinion on migrant workers is also varies based on region in Russia, just like in the United States, just like in any country when it comes to migrants. But I cannot see this situation by an organization that that calls itself the Islamic State, right? Uh, I can't see that this will not uh, inspire Islamophobic hatred in the country, obviously. I mean, that's kind of the point of what the terrorists want to achieve. Uh, and now this, he says... Uh, Isn't that a good reason to question if these are even the guys who carried out the attack? Okay, yeah, absolutely, that can be questioned. That can be questioned when it comes to the arrest of absolutely any sort of terrorist, et cetera, et cetera. The, 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 the burden of proof now falls on the Russian uh, judicial system to show uh, everybody that they were the right guys, right? This is, in my opinion, far too big of an event for them to uh, just arrest some randoms on the street and then show them as the as the terrorists because literally the eyes of every single Russian in the country are looking at this and are looking at who is going to be arrested and are going to be looking at what the evidence for their arrest is. Um, but at least the guys caught in the white Renault, dude, there's plenty of videos of them fleeing the scene in that particular Renault then a couple of hours later being caught in that fucking Renault, being caught with equipment in it, descriptions, do very much so, call line, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying it's not a possibility that they're doing a fucking black site operation, et cetera, et cetera. There's a chance that you have with any sort of arrest, unfortunately. But here, my call is uh, it's too much in the limelight for them to want to wanna potentially risk this, especially when they can catch the real guys. Why not fucking catch the real guys? You know, one of the things that struck me here is that Russia and the United States, you know, sworn enemies at this point, and yet the U.S. says it warned Russia that a potential terrorist attack would take place. What is this relationship like when it comes to, to intelligence? How does that work? Well, the United States says that it had a duty to inform. And so regardless of what the country is, it will inform if it understands that some type of terrorist attack is going to take place. And the U.S. says that's exactly what they did with Russia now. Uh, and they say they did it directly. Again, to repeat, like Russia literally in that week had a mass arrest of ISIS-K members which were trying to do a different attack, okay? We do not know if the U.S. called this one out or another one out. And no matter how much the Russian state apparatus might have said, which they have said, this is just the U.S. trying to stir up problems here, they obviously acted on that fucking intelligence. Everybody would act on that intelligence. Same would happen if it goes the other way around and the Russians say, hey, we have information that the terrorist cell might do something in the U.S. The U.S. is going to say, fuck off, you're just trying to stir problems, but they're going to look into it. Okay. Immediately CNN jumping on this and saying, ha ha, look, we, we tried to warn them, but they didn't do anything. Uh, crazy Russians, am I right? They will call anything that comes from America propaganda. Well, if you called out 700 fucking attacks and it didn't happen, and then you cried wolf 700 in the first time and it did happen, the problem is in the previous 700 callouts. I was going to ask you what you think it might do to, to his narrative with the people uh, of Russia that he ha was unable to safeguard the country and there was a warning in place. Yeah, like with every terror attack, absolutely anywhere else, people will say, hey, why didn't you stop this? This isn't a particularly Russian thing, that, that the way they're trying to spin it. It wouldn't be a particularly Indian thing, a particularly Iraqi thing, a particularly Brazilian thing. But again, this orientalizing notion that the same thing that happens in the U.S. is just uh, an event happening in a bubble, you know, and it's not going to happen again and it doesn't have political implication. But everywhere else, this is like this warrants all these fucking presentable white people to come and give immense fucking analysis, right? There was a terror cell that did something fucked up. Do they have a connection uh, with uh, the state that Russia is currently at war at? Most likely no, but that should not be denied as a possibility. There you go. Brilliant analysis. Can I have a 300K a month fucking CNN salary? Uh, yeah, this is not much. I don't know. Everybody wanted me to cover this story, but it's kind of a, you know, a horrible event that obviously I'm very sad that this happened and hits me very close to my heart, just like everything is that is happening in Ukraine. Because, again, as a Slav, I feel very connected to both Ukrainians and Russians.
But that's what it was. It was a terrorist attack that local politicians, in the case of both Ukraine and Russia, will try to use in their own interest. Uh, there are Ukrainian state representatives that have Wonderful. been saying, a new child oh, soldier. Russia I mean, orchestrated subscriber. this terrorist attack at home in order to get further support against Ukraine and other bullshit like that. And obviously the local political elites in Russia are going to use this horrible event in order to increase support for their own cause. Oh my God, mind-blowing bourgeois politicians using absolutely anything like the fiends that they are in order to garner greater support and gre greater reactionary sentiment. Uh, one thing I'm happy to see, though, is that for now there is no open rhetoric when it comes to the representatives of the Russian state, at least, uh, to dabble in direct Islamophobia, right? At least nothing that I've seen for now. Which, which I'm very, very glad uh, is happening. And in a, in a weird sort of way, in a very weird sort of way, this is being pushed more towards being somehow correlated to Ukraine is not allowing a standard Islamophobic perspectives to fester. Because again, it's not in Russia's interest uh, as a country with a lot of Muslims to, uh, to define this, a country with a lot of Muslims as allies, and a country whose working class is very much so, to a very large extent, uh, Muslim as well. But let's, let's hope that doesn't change, because we all know dividet imperum works everywhere, including the United States, Russia, France, or fucking, I don't know, India. Uh, and with that being said, yeah, this story is kind of over, which leads us into... We are talking about internet topics and a meta-meta reaction of this streamer watching another streamer react to another streamer, Candace motherfucking Owens. We have covered various...